expansion thoughts in the ACC. And then there's Gene Smith, the athletic director of one of the most powerful universities in the country, a big boy school in Ohio State. And we're joined by Dan Hope, the 11 Warriors, who joins us on 365 Sports. Was this something that was surprising? Had it been rumored? Your thoughts, Dan? Thank you. Yeah, it's funny you say the craziness of college football because when we were told yesterday that there was going to be a press conference with Gene Smith this morning, I thought, oh, it's just we're, we're going to talk to him about Oregon and Washington. You know, he's an influential voice in those conversations with the Big Ten. And so I thought uh, that you know, we were just going to be talking to him about uh, Big Ten expansion. And then we found out that uh, he was going to be retiring today. So it was definitely not something that, you know, we had heard about before this morning, but you know, sounds like something that, you know, he had been thinking about for a while and decided now is the right time to make that announcement. Dan, he's a, he's kind of a Titan in the industry, not kind of, he is a Titan in the industry of athletic directors. And he has been very instrumental in building up one of the best athletic departments in the country. Uh, Obviously, you know, Ohio State probably have to worry about who they're going to hire because they're going to get a lot of good applicants, but will this leave a bit of a void because he was so huge and influential in this role? Yeah, I mean, you talk about a guy who, you know, by the time he's done next year is going to have been at Ohio State for 19 years. That's a a long time to be the athletic director at one school, which certainly tells you the kind of influence that he has had, not only at Ohio State, but uh, in the Big Ten and across college sports nationally. So I think definitely uh, it leaves huge shoes to fill for sure, because he's somebody that, you know, like you said, he's a titan in the industry. He's not just somebody who has, Uh, made a big impact on Ohio State sports. He's somebody who has been a very influential voice in uh, conversations about college sports at the national level. I mean, he's somebody who, you know, the NCAA had on the panel a few years ago when they realized that, you know, NIL was going to become a thing. You know, he was one of the people that they trusted to kind of help them, you know, figure out how to navigate that new world. And he's somebody who has uh, been in a lot of those kind of committees over the years. And so uh, definitely I think he leaves huge shoes to fill, and whoever ends up filling those shoes is, is certainly going to have a significant voice as well just based on the position they'll be taking over. So he was once at Iowa State, once at Arizona State. They're about to be a part of the same conference. You mentioned Washington and Oregon, which came down in a flurry on Friday. What what are your thoughts uh, as a guy who covers, obviously, Ohio State, but the Big Ten and the addition of two pretty damn big names? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a new world of college football, right, where we're seeing that, you know, it, you know, 10 years ago that, you know, we just kind of looked at the Big Ten as a Midwest conference, and now they're becoming this national conference and really now, you know, staking claim to, you know, what you'd probably consider the four biggest brands on the West Coast in college sports. And so, uh, you know, I think, you know, there was always kind of a thought after they added USC and UCLA a year ago that, you know, Oregon and Washington would probably eventually end up in the Big Ten. And, you know, they, they were reticent to do it at the time. Uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, based on what we heard from Gene Smith today, that, you know, a lot of it ultimately coming to pass this past week was Fox stepping up and saying, we'll give you more money to add Oregon and Washington. And obviously money talks in these conversations. And so, you know, I think once the financials worked out, you know, there was an agreement within the Big Ten that, you know, adding, you know, two more big brands to the conference was something that would be good for business going forward. Does this do, – do Ohio State fans get nervous about this? Is this is one more team in the way, or how do they feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing about it is it's obviously going to coincide with the expansion to 12-team playoff, right? So it's not necessarily, you know – you're going to add these teams to the conference, but it's not like they're all going to be competing for one playoff berth anymore. Now they could be competing for several playoff berths, and I think that's certainly, from the Big Ten's perspective, one of the biggest reasons why they're adding these schools is because they, when this playoff starts, you know, they want to have three or four teams in the playoff every year, and now, you know, particularly if teams like USC, Washington, Oregon, I mean, teams that have all been in that conversation before, you know, it just gives you that much that many more teams who can be in that conversation. And so certainly I think it's going to make the Big Ten more competitive, and I think it's definitely going to change the landscape a little bit for Ohio State because, you know, in recent years it's really been Ohio State versus Michigan, you know, Penn State in there a little bit as well. But you kind of add those three teams and then a big drop-off in the Big Ten, that's going to change in a big way next year where you're going to be adding in uh, teams that are certainly going to be real contenders in that conference. Yeah, that I mean it. You know, those are two out. No, they're not. I mean, they have been Washington. Obviously, this year, of course, they're all going to be 
pretty good in the Pac-12, it looks like to me. Penn State, speaking of them, I, I know Ohio State and Michigan is like the 1 and 1A, one and of course you got to put them in the right order depending on who you're talking to, but you know, I see a lot of smoke about how good they might be. Are they ready for that level? I think they are. I think you look at the roster that they have this year. I, I, I think this is going to be the strongest roster they've had in several years. You know, we kind of saw them you know, kind of a mid, you know, 2010s there, kind of made that surge to really becoming a top contender in the Big Ten, and they've kind of taken a step back here for a few years. But I think this year they're set up. Uh, you know, I think with Drew Auer taking over at quarterback, I think there's a lot of excitement about what he can bring to that offense. And they've got, you know, two really good running backs and Nick Singleton and Catron Allen, and they've got a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball as well. And so I, I think they are very much going to be a contender this year. And I think that that three-team race at the top of the Big Ten East with Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State is going to be very interesting. Who's the quarterback? At OSU. I, yeah, I, I, lean, I lean toward Kyle McCord, but we still have not gotten clarity on that. When Ryan Day was asked about it today, he said it's, it's been a really good battle and it's still back and forth. So, you know, I think they're hoping to get some clarity this week. They're going to have their first real scrimmage of preseason camp on Saturday. And so I think, you know, that's going to be a big opportunity for both of those guys. I, I think Devin Brown is performing well enough to make it a tough decision on him. But I think un until I hear that, you know, Devin Brown's going to be the starter, I'm going to continue to lean back toward Kyle McCord because he does have that extra year of experience in the system. He's been the backup for the past few years. He's even started a game and won a Big Ten Freshman of the Week award for Ohio State. And so I, I do think, you know, it, it's always kind of been Kyle McCord's job to lose, but he still hasn't necessarily separated himself to win it yet. Dan, I don't know if I asked you this, and I should have, but is there someone that is the obvious target to replace um, Gene Smith as the AD? Well, well, you know, the first, the first name that I have heard today is Pat Chun, who's currently the athletic director at Washington State. Uh, he's an Ohio State alum. He worked at Ohio State for 15 years, many of those years alongside Gene Smith. So, you know, the early intel that I have heard is that he's somebody who could be a front runner for the job. But I think the factor in here is Ohio State's also currently searching for a new president. They haven't mm -hmm. even named a new president. And so, obviously no decision can really be made until they've hired a new president first. But from what I've heard, you know, Pat Chun from Washington state is definitely a name to watch here. I think, you know, two other names that you can also throw in there are Heather like at Pitt and Martin Jarman at UCLA, because they also both worked at Ohio state for a long time, worked alongside Gene Smith. I do think that, you know, it's likely that Ohio state is going to hire someone who previously worked alongside Gene Smith, who has experience working at Ohio State, because it's not like Ohio State's going to be looking for radical change here. I think Ohio State's going to want to keep things running pretty similarly to the way they've already been run. So I think it is very likely that Ohio State is going to look for someone who you know has been an athletic director elsewhere and has that experience, but who is very familiar with how things already operate at Ohio State. By the way, Pat Chun today, uh, I think just a few minutes ago, has had a press conference where he's kind of laying out on the table everything that went wrong and why he's taken some, you know, well-deserved shots at Pac-12 leadership. Yeah, I mean, you could probably kind of see why that he might be looking uh, for mm -hmm. a new job. You know, I mean, I think, I think he's someone who would probably be a natural candidate regardless because – he grew up in Ohio. He went to Ohio State. And so I think he's somebody who's long been on that list of potential successors for Ohio State. But, I mean, yeah, he's in a position right now with everything that's going on at Washington State. But, I mean, if I was in his shoes and I was getting a potential opportunity to go to Ohio State, I'd probably be looking at it, too. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time, Dan. Great stuff. Always great to have you on when we talk Ohio State and also the Big Ten. Dan Hope, 11 Warriors on the Ohio State story that A.D. Gene Smith will retire in a little less than a year in July of next year.